y'all. Um, my name's Stephanie Bowes, of course. Um, this is my second video, so if it's not perfect, I, I apologize. Uh, I'm really trying to work at getting it, you know, at least up there a little bit. <laughs> um, I didn't plan on making this video till tomorrow because I wanted to do like every other day thing, like one day research everything and get it in my brain because I have a pretty good memory. And then the next day, shoot it so that I don't have to, you know, keep looking down in and stuff like that. But this case, I did not know what I was getting myself into. It is so many details. I don't think anyone can remember every little thing. Um, okay, it's about a guy um, named David Fuller. Um, he lives in the UK. Uh, so I don't know much about um, there, but he's not in the States. Um, how he started out was in 1987, he, um, murdered two women in the same year. He actually got away with it for over 30 years. Um, I'm going to start out with, um, telling y'all about the two victims and then you'll, you'll come to see why I'm like, what the, it could get worse. <clears throat> the first victim was, um, Wendy Neal, K-N-E-L-L. -L. She was 25. She was a manager of Super Snap Store where he went and got his pictures developed. That's how he came to, I guess, put his eyes on her and scope her out like they do, you know. And, um... It was in Turnbridge Wells, UK. That's, I don't know where that is exactly, but anyways, her boyfriend found her naked body and bloodstained sheets in her bed in June of 1987. Um, not only was she murdered, but it was on her father's birthday. She had been sexually assault, uh, assaulted and strangled. Her mother said that she used to find herself in the middle of her uh, garden, like in the middle of the night, just crying her eyes out. That's how messed up her mother was over it. Um, but then um, she also said that she was a great daughter, good spirited, just started a new life but she was like I guess she didn't have much of one did she it's just horrible I could I couldn't imagine like your daughter just moving out can you imagine um, you're already scared that she's gonna burn the house down and then something like you know that happens <clears throat> sorry about my voice by the way the second um, victim she was Caroline Pierce she was found in a drain 40 miles from her home Five months after killing Wendy, Fuller, which is him, that's what I'm going to call him, Fuller, abducted Caroline. She was 20 years, at, um, 20 years old. He abducted her from outside of her home. She was a waitress at Buster Brown's, which he had visited, and that's how he got his eyes on her. Her baby, uh, I mean her body was found by a farm worker in a flooded drain 40 miles away from Romney. Uh, it was an area Fuller knew from bicycling. Um, she, was in, she was naked, but she had, um, I think, pantyhose or something nearby uh, because they ended up getting a bloody fingerprint off of those. And they saved it because back then, and I, imagine it, in 1987, they didn't have, you know, the DNA updated like they do today. Um, they've been catching all kinds of people these days from back then. But anyways, um, the murder squad investigated for many weeks, but forensic samples were poor with no established DNA database to help identify the killer. The orientation was 
scaled back. So that means they was just they had they was left with more questions than you know answers. Now I'm gonna let you know how he got caught because remember this is like 30 years later. What became known as the bedside murder. That's what they called him because, you know, he had um, killed two ladies and they, um, I'm not sure why they called him that because the second girl was found in her drain. Uh, I don't know. But anyways, that's what they called him. Um, it, he remained unsolved even through the DNA from Wendy was enhanced in 1999. In 2019, a re it was boosted by an enhanced DNA sample from Caroline, her tights. Remember I said the bloody finger? Though the breakthrough came from Wendy. Checks on the National DNA Base, which was set up in 1995, showed a close match to 90 people. They ended up windling it down to like, you know, just a few people, and then they got down to his brother, and then, which led him to him. That's how he got caught. Um, when police caught on him at his home in Heathfield, East Sussex, he, de he denied knowing the two women and the town Turnbridge Wells, which is where the women were that he killed. But when they were searching his house, they found, they found so many pictures and floppy disk and just different stuff like that. And he, oh, I forgot to say, he worked at a hospital, two different hospitals over, over the years. His wife, his third wife that he's with was actually the nurse at the hospital he was at now. Um, they ended up um, searching his house and they found so many pictures of him. He was a maintenance man, so he had um, a slide card to all areas. He was going into the mortuary, mor how do you say it? Mor mor I'm so bad with words. Mortuary. And like having, to, you know, with these dead bodies that either had accidents or just whatever. The youngest girl was nine. Um, and the oldest was a hundred, I believe. They believe he had sexual encounters with at least a hundred of them, if not more. They have no way to know, but they did verify 75 from the picture and stuff. His third wife was in the courtroom. He, oh, he admitted to those, but he denied the women. But on the sixth day of his court appearance, he ended up pleading guilty to the two women. Which is messed up because that he got life for that, but he only got like three months per victim that he sexually assaulted in the you know, hospitals. I think that is so messed up. You know, I, I mean, I know life is life, but I mean, just throw away the key, put him under the prison for all I care. It's, it's so weird. Anyways, his third wife was in the courtroom with his son and his brother. And while all the details were revealed, imagine being married to this man and then finding out while you're probably working with him at the hospital, he's doing all, all this stuff. And then you find out the nine-year-old little girl, um, her mother visited her in that in that room that he sexually assaulted her three hours afterwards. Ugh, uh, I couldn't imagine. Oh my God, just thinking that you were that close to him, you know, oh my God. He would have been very lucky <laughs> that I didn't know. Um, one woman was shaking in the courtroom in tears and she had to leave, she was very distressed. Uh, Mala was the third wife, later told the news that she said, I'm not with him. I couldn't carry on that relationship. I'm too upset to even think about what's going on. I couldn't live with it. You couldn't imagine how distressed I am, which 
I don't think anyone could unless you're in that, them shoes. Oh my God, I couldn't imagine. That is, that's crazy. Not only did he kill them two women, but I mean, oh God, gross. And then he probably came home to her and was like, uh. Anyways, when police searched their home, I'm gonna let y'all know how much stuff they found. Okay, I have to read this because this is the part that there's no way I can remember all this. They found 14 million images, 4 million videos, 100 hard drives, 2,200 floppy disks, 30 SIM cards and mobile phones, 1,300 CDs and DVDs, and 34,000 photos, slides, negatives, and film rolls. He has named some of his hard drives with some of the names of the victims and also had a notebook in which he recorded the names. Some images are also revealed in the time and the date that they were taken, which helped to narrow down some of the victims. Azra, Kimmel's mom is upset with her verdict because that was the one with one of the younger girls. She was so beautiful. She fell off a bridge and that's how she passed. And she's the one that went in three hours later afterwards. Um, I'll, I'll put a picture up here so you'll get to see what the young lady looked like. She was, she was beautiful. Um, as requested by the Secretary of the State, we will work with the families and NHS Relution to agree a compensation scheme with the pain and the delay that may be caused by individual claim action. We will make any further improvements recommended from the independent inquiry what we have undertaken a risk assessment of our mortuary including what's that say including ourselves against existing human tissue authority guidance we've been in contact with the affected families in recent weeks in our pro and our priority um, is to uh, give them anything they may need. So, in other words, I, I'm assuming, like, you know, psychiatrists, they'll pay for all that, uh, medications, all, like if they had to go into a, a place, I mean, all that, you know, a therapist, they, uh, the state was going to pay for all that for all the victims, which I'm pretty sure most of them needed that. Um, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much the case in a nutshell. I mean, people like that, that's scary because you probably walk past them every day. Like anytime you're out, they say, I forgot the percentage, but everybody in this world walks past a serial killer. I forgot how many they say in a lifetime. I, three, I could be wrong, but I don't know. But how scary is that? So, just make sure you always watch it for, like, weird cars on your street. Because people like that like to scope out their victims for weeks. They like to know when they drop their kids off at school. They know everything. So... If you ever see anything weird like that, make sure, you know, you're aware you do the right thing because I would hate to see anything like that happen to any of y'all. Um, I do appreciate y'all watching my videos. Um, I know this ain't the best recordings like um, other people's, but hopefully I get better as I, you know, go on. Um, I'm really passionate about this. I want to do a series on missing people that's been missing because I feel like, you know, they don't need to be forgotten. They they need to be out there. And I know they say that if someone isn't found within the first so many hours that they're probably dead, but there has been cases where, you know, people have been found after months of being, you know, kidnapped. Anyways, um, thanks for listening, and I will try to come up with a, a missing story. You know, if anybody has a missing 
person that they know personally that they want me to do a, a story on so I can get their name out there, um, you can leave it in the comments. Um, I'll go through every comment, you know, and I'll try to talk to whoever. Um, or if there's a story you want me to cover, just let me know. Um, I love good ideas, you know. I stay up at night and try to think of, like, you know, good stuff to do. Um, anyways, thank you again, and I will be seeing y'all soon. Um, I'm wanting to at least to put out four videos a week. Um, I'm wanting to do it every other day, like, I, I was wanting to do, like, today, booking it over, and, and tomorrow doing it, that way I don't have to read like I did today, but stuff like that, like, I couldn't have remembered how much stuff they found, but anyways, um, I guess I will go, and I hope everyone has a good Christmas and holidays, and love y'all, bye.